Smith with a seven point win, 124-117. Shoot 55%. 42 boards on the boards. 31 assists. Dominate plus 12 in the paint. Back to Detroit. LeBron is speaking with the media. LeBron, no uh, rest for the weary for your group. Do go back to L.A. And after the six-game road trip, you have the team with the best record in the league in the Celtics awaiting you. AD said that he feels like, as a group, you feel like you can take on anyone challenge um, in the league. Where do you think things stand for you? getting the 500 record for this and, and going towards that next challenge? I mean, that's the NBA, so um, you take all challenges as they come and look forward to the matchup. Just looking back at the trip a little bit, um, you know, started off so strong, had some things, you know, guys out of the lineup, and, and then you end on a high note. How do you feel, feel view uh, this this trip for your group? Um, I think it was a good trip for us. It was a good bonding trip for us to hit the road, 11-day, 12-day road trip, six games. And obviously we started off very high and then uh, injuries, illnesses, um, you know, kind of got our rhythm off and had some guys sit out games. Um, but for the majority of, uh, of the trip, I thought we played good basketball. Um, you know, we ended on a high note, so that's always good. Uh, LeBron. Darvin was saying that uh, I guess you guys looked at some film this morning about the rhythm of the group that, that was closing that fourth quarter for you guys in Philly and, and said he was giving some deference to you guys finding a rhythm in the closing quarter tonight. How would you feel with the group out there and, and how's it been kind of getting used to Darvin's style and, and building trust in some of those groups out there? Well, I mean, um, you know, trust is always key no matter who's out on the floor, but, you know, having to close the lineup and knowing, you know, the guys are going to be on the floor when it's winning time. Uh, it builds a lot of chemistry, builds a lot of trust in that. So, um, you know, tonight was another one of those instances when we was able to build more trust and, and, and win a game, a uh, close game. Brian, for someone like Austin, who just knocked down some big shots, do you think it's more of him having trust in himself, you specifically, other teammates having trust in him, or is it both of it? Um, I don't know. I mean, that's, a, that's an awesome question, but I trust him. Um, I love what he brings to the table, both offensively and defensively. And uh, his basketball IQ is very high, and he plays hard. He doesn't make many mistakes. And um, any times he, he's on the floor with me, um, I trust him to make the play. Either if he has the ball in his hands or I have it, I want to you know, try to find him. And that's um, you know, what I was able to see at the end of the game. And you know, they left him open, and I was able to find him, and he was able to do what he do best and knocked it down. LeBron, the basketball world has mobilized over the past 10 months to support Brittany Griner to see her released and returning back home. Thoughts and feelings on that? Um, it's amazing. Um, you know, especially around the holidays where she can be with her family. Um, um, you know, get back and, you know, for us um, as, as a brotherhood and sisterhood, um, you know, we, we welcome her with open arms and love and um, of support and just happy to have her back home uh, on U.S. soil, that's for sure. Mike, do you have any more questions? Um, LeBron, uh, you just said this is a success road trip, uh, 1500 on the road. Uh, he didn't play. Uh, you, you guys both didn't play uh, in front, and he only played a couple minutes in Cleveland. Uh, do you think this is a success, uh, six in road trip? Um, I thought we played great basketball at times. I thought we could have played better at times, but <clears throat> for the majority of the trip, I thought we, we played the way we want to play. And, uh, you know, happy way that we was able to come out tonight. And, you know, the hardest game on a six-game road trip is always the last one because, you know, you'd be looking forward to getting back to your own bed, getting back to your own rhythm, getting back to your own place. And, um, you know, so for us to come out and play the way we played tonight um, was uh, was huge. Um, so, you know, we got to try to get as much rest as we can. Um, you know, starting from now all the way to Tuesday night because uh, we're going to need it because a very good team is coming into our building. But I like the way we ended the trip. Thanks, LeBron. Anthony Davis and the Lakers finished. Um, he had just six shots tonight, three of six, coming off that season high in Philly of 25. But he had the three at the end of the buzzer at the half. And then he had that shot right there, who really just, which really just sealed the deal. But that trust in him as a second-year player, Fish, that is earned and he's earned it quickly. If, I mean, at the end, I guess it's just, is it impressive? Why is it impressive? What is it you're seeing that he's able to, and we talked about a little bit in the, the pregame show, kind of absorb that, that respect and that trust right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, teammates, you know, they start to pick up on, you know, how guys react in certain situations. And Austin's heartbeat, his heart rate doesn't increase very much. Mm. And uh, teammates are really keen to that. Like, they know 
if they see guys getting a little rattled, uh, if Austin Reeves has to cover Clay Thompson, does he look like he's nervous? You know, if he has to guard Devin Booker or Jason Tatum on Tuesday, is he backing away from that challenge? Or is he still going to stick his chin in? And even if he's overmatched, he's not, he's not going to give in to the difference. And so those are things that guys pick up with, from their teammates after some time. And Austin has clearly done that, uh, even starting in his rookie season last year. But he has expanded on that this year. They trust him offensively. They trust him to match up with whoever he needs to on the defensive end. His coaches trust him. Uh, and it says a lot about who he is as a young man. I think, too, we had a lot uh, on our minds of him coming into this season, second season. Where is he going to make those strides? What's the next step? I know catch and shoot threes or the three ball in general uh, was something that he wanted to work on this summer. You look at it tonight, of the six shots, five or threes, all three of his makes were for deep. We're from deep nine points. Yeah, I mean, he's a smart guy that, you know, he knows in order to stay in the NBA, uh, there's certain philosophies and things you have to do. But, and, and that's get better and adapt uh, to what the coaches want and, and how a particular team is playing. But what I love about Austin is that he doesn't care about, I mean, I'm sure he respects talent and, and guards that he has to guard, but he... He, he respects the game. Like, he, he gets all of his out of the game. So he knows these guys are going to get theirs. But there's so much more in basketball other than scoring points and highlights and stuff like that. And he grabs all of that. And that makes him, you know, imperative to a team. Like, all the intangibles and all the stuff, he just grabs all the rest of it that basketball yields you. Basketball says, here, here it is. What do you want to do? And he just he just takes it all. And he plays the game the way it's supposed to be played. I love that about him. We hit on this on the pregame show. I'm going to bring it up again. I can't tell you how many times over the years I've seen role players get nervous playing with a guy like Kobe Bryant or guys like LeBron and AD. They go into a shell. They pass when they should uh, hit or at least attempt an open shot. So Austin Reeves could have tried to pass out of that if he wanted to, but he didn't. He said, look, I, I like the moment. Uh, LeBron threw the ball to me. Kind of reminds me of when uh, uh, Meta said, Kobe passed me the ball. He passed me the ball mm -hmm. in Game 7 of the 2010 NBA Finals. Look, if you're not a big scorer, you, you got to stay ready. And Reeves has shown us he can score. Not, not as much tonight, but a great shot by him in that corner. And then he falls into the crowd, too, mm -hmm. uh, for a little extra drama on that play. Big bucket by him. Obviously, the trust there from LeBron James as we move to him. Uh, 35 tonight. He had 23, not very efficient in Philly. We talked about that, 9 of 22 on Friday, but 14 of 24, 5 assists, 5 rebounds. What would you like most about his game, Fish, and the way he attacked? Yeah, I thought tonight, especially in the first half, he was the aggressor to start. And so much of what the Lakers have done recently has been around the, the impact of Anthony Davis. But LeBron tonight, which I'm not surprised, right? he's spent his entire career in the Eastern Conference playing for the Cleveland Cavaliers. So when you go back to play the Detroit Pistons, it's like you've been, it's like you're back <laughs> at home in the gym that you like understand division still. quite yeah. well. Uh, and so I like the fact that he was aggressive tonight, not necessarily waiting for Anthony Davis to be as dominant. That allowed AD to just kind of get his throughout the course of the game, still putting you know together great numbers. Um, but he wanted to win this game, and and sometimes even against opponents that are inferior. LeBron maybe didn't necessarily have to score a 35. Mm -hmm. but, but it was important to send the message to the rest of the guys on the team that tonight matters. Yep. Right? Because then that raises the level of everyone else on the team. If LeBron comes out slow, <laughs> if AD comes out a little lethargic and slow, sometimes it's hard for everybody else to decide that we have to win tonight. And so LeBron getting off to a good start was a good thing. That 3-3 three and three going to 2-4 and four is not a fun feeling when it comes to the trip. So in terms of that mindset in setting that tone by both of them. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what leaders do. And, and Fish is right. I mean, I, I mean, we would see Magic and Kareem and, you know, we all were ready to play. We're all true professionals, but you do see your leaders. And it's a subconscious thing. It's not like you're, you're conscious about it. It just, it just happens. So it was nice to see him, you know, play aggressive. Only one turnover, which is, you know, kind of unusual for him when he's handling the ball that way. But the leadership and, and the way the guys picked up on that and, you know, they, they won the game. They needed to win that game, come back home, take care of business. Yeah, if the Lakers had lost tonight, they'd be six games under 500. That's not much better than when they were 2-10 and 10, you know, a few weeks ago. So good win by them. And, uh, yeah, you, you take your hats off. 
A couple warts in the game for sure. You can't allow a 41-point third quarter to a team like Detroit. That's a bottom five offensive team. You can also say that was just one player getting hot. So a little bit of both. If they want to, uh, you know, if Darvin wants to pound uh, them into to some uh, extra work over the next couple of days, take a look at that third quarter. Or they could just say, yeah, all right. That's <laughs> what you say. Let's not let the facts get in the way of good story. <laughs> Here go. we go. Back to Detroit. AD is now speaking with Mike in the media. Yeah, AD, I know before the trip, uh, you would you would said 